the plan of this is uh, just very uh, brief. Uh, going to talk a little bit about uh, urban transformation, the project and the questions that we have. Uh, a little bit about um, the tell itself, the site, about earlier work and then what we have been doing over the last uh, couple of years and also doing and then trying to summarize this uh, a little bit with the past and the present. Um, urban transformation, this has been an ongoing issue through all these talks uh, basically. Um, this reminds me that when when we look back on urban and urban urban studies, particularly in archaeology, I, we think of uh, uh, we think of Gordon Child and urban uh, revolution uh, 50 years ago. About 50 years later, at about the turn of the century, uh, there was another revolution, another important revolution, and this was when more people were living in cities. Uh, or the majority of people living in cities. And this challenged uh, the society, uh, how we organize urban areas. Uh, this challenged how the, or the economy and also the cultural heritage itself. Um, there is a huge pressure on several issues, among other things, also the uh, cultural heritage. Um, urbanization in the Middle East or in the Levant uh, is not a new issue. It's been going on for, or it's been studied for at least 150 years. There are a number of different approaches, number of different technologies, number of different issues being raised. Um, also, whether uh, the neighboring re regions such as Mesopotamia or Egypt play their role. Um, but regardless of this, um, we see that uh, we see that walled, city, uh, walled cities or um, walled communities they appear also in the Middle East, and of course, um, this uh, urbanization or urban transformation this is due to the modern influx uh, of uh, and uh, modern uh, political conflict, also political conflict, particularly in this area. There is a rapid physical transformation in this urban land landscape. And this is what we are really trying to approach. Um, we have been doing this in, in an overall uh, project called the Urban Transformation in the Levant. Um, we're trying to build uh, competence uh, in urban studies and human geography. We are trying to meet these challenges um, between the public and the private sector. Uh, and we're also trying to understand it in the long-term process. Uh, this tra urban transformation and what we see today, the over-urbanization, which we like to call it. Because there is, this is um, in many areas of the world, the, the urbanization is also out of control, particularly in our area that we are talking about now. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that, but I'll come back to that. But related to the archaeology and the sites, um, we also have these questions. Why build an urban center here, or an urban community, a walled city? Um, how do we understand this city in part? Uh, how do we understand this city as part of an increasing urban landscape, both in the past and in the present? And um, how is the landscape connected uh, to the changing political landscape over about 150 years? And how has the past been uh, presented at this specific urban site? And how is, has this been uh, communicated to the local people? And how is this reflected in the memory of the people? Um, the, the site is called Tel, Tel es Tel, or also I. I will come back to the more details a little bit later on. It's uh, located. Uh, about uh, 16 kilometers northeast of uh, Jerusalem, um, next to a small earlier city uh, or earlier village, now a city, um, Deir de um, It is Tel Tel, -tel is one of the largest uh, early Bronze Age cities in the Palestinian territories. Um, it's a mountainous area. It's yeah scarce resources, but a very strategic position. Uh, and there has been a number of excavations pointing towards a pre-urban phase, 
and three urban cases, and also an Iron Age space. Um, the earlier work has been done by um, several scholars. Edward Robinson and Ellie Smith, they ident identified this type as biblical eye. Um, and later also Condor and Kitchener followed up on this. Um, then in 1928, the, uh, John Gaston, he excavated a couple of trenches here, um, and he claimed it to be eye, uh, because of uh, tentatively late uh, Bronze Age uh, pottery. The problem with this is that it was never published, so it's hard to really know what uh, what he really found. Then, in uh, in the early 30s, Judith Ma uh, Marquette Krause, she excavated for three years, three seasons. There was supposed to be a fourth one, but she unfortunately died. Um, and she was really a pi uh, female pioneer in this uh, in this area, but that's another. Uh, uh, but the aim was also to uh, identify or to search for biblical eye. Um, she discovered three urban spaces um, and also an Iron Age uh, village, which was not uh, fortified. Then in the 1970s, uh, Joseph uh, Calway, American, uh, he also uh, did a number of excavations uh, for six, seven years, more or less the same still then. Um, and he also identified this as the, the biblical eye. Confirmed much of the excavations in the 1930s, uh, being urban, uh, urban phases and also an Iron Age uh, phase. Then in 2003, there was a survey by Hanni Nuredin, um, and he argued that this could be a, a model uh, for, uh, uh, for Palestinian sites. Uh, he wanted to go beyond previous uh, interpretations um, and also involve others. And this follows up on our uh, project, try to deepen and challenge uh, the earlier uh, interpretations, but also rewrite the narrative uh, of the site beyond, not only, but also beyond the biblical narrative. Um, the site is uh, just northeast of uh, of Jerusalem, very close to present-day Ramallah. Um, and here is just a plan of uh, the excavations in the 30s and the 60s, 70s. Um, and what we actually have been doing, here is just some uh, pictures. Yeah, this is quite important. This is an aerial photo from the 1960s, late 1960s, um, where you see that the, the site, actually, there, there is nobody living close. The village is not really close to the site. Uh, now, uh, particularly after uh, 1995, 1996, uh, uh, there has been an enormous uh, development uh, close to the site. Um, this is not the only site uh, in Palestine or in the Palestinian areas where you see that the urban areas are really growing into the archaeological sites. But this is just one example and <coughs> one, uh, one such site. Um, so what we wanted to do is try to preserve now what is left of the site. Uh, try to also in, in, engage the community. Uh, we have been uh, interviewing a number of people in the community and trying to find out, you know, do they really care about the site? And, and um, yeah, what, what can we do with this site? We started off, of course, with an uh, assessment, including uh, uh, collecting previous excavations, records, documentation, as far as possible. Um, we have uh, done some uh, rehabilitation of, uh, and preservation of the site, uh, basically focusing on the earlier excavations, cleaning up, uh, uh, trying to clear the structures so that they can be seen again. Um, because in uh, after the American excavation in the 60s and 70s, uh, most of the squares were filled in. So basically there was nothing to see. And also uh, this, this place is uh, used for agriculture and also for herding. So this is a number of important and very difficult issues to, to solve. Uh, we also had some small targeted uh, excavations in selected areas, particularly what is 
they define as temple area. Um, but we have basically been working with what, what one, one may term as a community archaeology, because as you see just from this picture that uh, the, the local residents have been uh, building the houses more or less on site, or um, destroying large parts of the site as well. Um, uh, we have been engaging uh, students, um, particularly from the state universities, um, both in the archaeological excavation, in heritage sports, and um, also interviewing a number of uh, local residents. Um, okay, yeah, fine. But in again, uh, in trying to involve the community, uh, uh, let them have an ownership to the site. Um, so, what does this tell us? Uh, this tells us that uh, there is an um, early understanding uh, of a uh, colonial and biblical frame of understanding that uh, it was from the 18th, early 18th or 19th century onwards, there, this has been the main interpretation of the site. From uh, 2000 or yeah, early 2000, uh, there has been attempts to rewrite uh, this, trying to challenge these earlier narratives. Um, both these projects and earlier excavations show fortifications, they show destructions, uh, but the timing is not really right to term it as a biblical site. Um, the early Bronze Age was apparently, or very clearly, a, a, a urban site or a walled society or maybe even a gated community. Gated community is maybe even a better term to use uh, as I would see it. And of course this contributes to our understanding of urbanism in the past but also in the present of the Palestinian areas. Um, the recent uh, urbanization, uh, particularly within Del Tibuan, has, created, has been created within a political context certainly of, my, uh, of conflict, but also of migrant workers investing in their own village. Um, so in that sense, it also reflect, uh, reflects a gated community even today. There is a massive uh, urban pressure on the cultural heritage, and this is also partly due to the lack of infrastructure and also, uh, no doubt, lack of control. So, in that sense, it gives us deeper insight to the processes that shape our society today, and of course, what also happened uh, in the past, but also give us understanding of the large transformative processes of our societies in the past and in the present, and in the, in the future. Thank you. Thank you.